Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. We're in our research and development facility and we're going to do a six-part video series on what we've discovered. I think we've been here about 18 months, so it's taken 18 months for <laughs> setup and testing and, and all of that stuff. It, it's been a labor of love. I, I've enjoyed all of it. We've learned a ton about low frequency management, middle and high frequency reflections. And you know, for those of you that follow us, you know that it's all about reflections and pressure, pressure and reflections. So low frequency pressure, middle and high frequency reflections. Those are the two main issues that we have to uh, take care of in our small rooms. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of the facility, starting with the front wall and We'll go from there. All righty, let's take a look at the front wall in our multiple channel facility. And you can see right away that we have quite a bit of low frequency management. Let's start with the back of the wall first. That's our ACDA10 technology in the modules, and those are stacked three rows high. And underneath them for the base is the ACDA12. So remember, we have two frequency responses with our carbon technology. We have the ACDA10, which is 30 to 300, and then we have the ACDA12, which is 30 to 50 hertz. So two different sponges, if you will, uh, two different frequency ranges, and they have to be applied accordingly. So that's what we have on the back. And then as you can see in the front there, in front of the modules, we have our foam technology. It looks like two to three layers. That's where we're currently at right now. Some other interesting things. This is our left channel speaker. And it has, as you can see, the ACDA 10 modules. And then that's our new 10 and 12 cubes, we call them. They're one foot by one foot. Same carbon technology as our bigger production units, but in a smaller module form that's, that's stackable and, of course, I've got it on top of the speakers because I'm managing the vibrations inside the cabinet. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. And since we're using horns, you know, I'm always chasing the brightness of horns. And we do that with our foam technology at the top. So more modules, as you can see, down at the floor. And then we've done something different. We've split that center channel into a left center and a right center. It's all with the same speaker type, same distribution array, same sound field. I never was a big fan of speakers underneath the screen or above the screen. You know, originally started out where the speaker was behind the screen in theaters, and, and that gave things a nice center focus for vocals and, and music and soundtracks and things like that. Well, it's difficult to do in smaller rooms, you know, because the screens won't really allow for that. And... Uh, I know they say they're acoustically transparent, but we've tested a lot of them, and it's sometimes 3 to 5 dB attenuation at, at certain frequencies. So we find that not to be acceptable for our situation here. So we scroll across the left center, obviously come to the screen, and then you can see at the bottom more of our cubes. And then we go to the right, right center, and we go all the way over here, there's the right channel, okay? And we have more foam on the front in front of the ACDA 10 series there. So that's the front wall. And we'll scroll one more time through it. That's one of the new 8K LED screens. I think that's an 85 inch screen there. We like uh, the definition and the resolution of that. Now between the speakers, <laughs> you can see some of our foam technology. This is a, a new thing I've been trying. Obviously, reflections and pressure are the two areas I focus on constantly because you won't believe the impact reflection has. When you start treating reflections, you really understand the impact that they have on the overall presentation. So I have sound panels between left, left center, our foam panels, and then right, right center. So I'm just managing the, the reflections. now. We're also even doing that with the side channel. So let's come over here and you can see that we have 
our foam panel and between the side channel speakers too. So that's what the front wall looks like as we speak. <laughs> Not something obviously you would have in your theater situation, but this is a research and development facility. So we're trying and constantly testing and trying to get a handle on all of this. And let's come up here. You can see in the ceiling, we have our foam technology throughout the whole ceiling. Get a handle on that. Okay. So that's the front wall. It's a series of low frequency management, middle and high frequency management, the split center channel. And that's our front end. 35 feet is the distance across. The room is actually 65 feet in length, but we've taken 35 feet. And then our ceiling height is 15 and our depth is 25. So it's a really good room, really good room size and volume. All right, so what we've done is obviously we're using our carbon and our foam technology in this process. So. You all know that low frequency management is all about having enough surface area, the right rate and level of absorption, which our carbon is. And our carbon and foam work together. If you look at the curves on both our carbon and the foam, you see that they were designed to work together. So the low rate and level of absorption, the middle and high frequency rate and level of absorption, the levels are different. Obviously, it's different technologies, but the rate of absorption is the same. You want to keep everything balanced in the room, including the treatment. We balance the speakers. We, we set them a certain distance apart. We, we balance the listening position to the speakers. And we, we just need to do that throughout the whole design of the room. Because then it's much easier to go back and correct efficiencies if everything is set up in a more balanced fashion. So that's what we look for. Predictability and consistency, just like in our products. So. We've done something a little bit different here, and, and we talked about it in, in the original setup about the split channel. I've never been a big fan of putting the speaker below the, 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 the screen or above the screen. You know, it started out originally behind the screen in theaters. That was fine for localization. But this other stuff to me is just marketing gimmick, okay? You don't want to disrupt the sound field in the front of the house. Let's call the front part of our, our room the front of the house for purposes of discussion. You want to keep everything nice and balanced. You want to keep the distribution array of the speakers the same. You want to keep the, the number and the diameter of the low frequency drivers the same. Predictability, consistency, that's the goal. And you can see, you know, that we've used a lot of our carbon technology to deal with uh, pressure in the room. Pressure is the big thing in theaters. You want to get that balanced first and foremost. So you can see here, we've done a little pressure mapping. We've, we've taken measurements at six locations within the room, and we've run the same song, the first 30 seconds of each song, we recorded the, the maximum pressure level in each location of the room, and you can see the results here. You know, we're within one or two dB in most cases. The standard deviation is small, so we're really, getting the room dialed in so that the pressure in the room is all balanced. And that takes a series of square footages of coverage at each location. You can see in, in the beginning footage where we walk through the room, you can see a certain amount of units here, a certain amount of units here, a certain amount of units between the speakers. You can even see our carbon technology on top of and below the speakers. So it's a whole series of Finding the right balance, the right square footage, the right amount of coverage on each surface area to get that nice pressure balance in the room. That's the goal. We want the low frequency energy to behave the same throughout the whole room. We don't want hot spots. We don't want, you know, a 40 or 50 cycle modal issue in the front of the room and, and maybe throughout the back also. But we definitely want to manage those pressure areas as best we can. And as we all know, and you've heard me say many times in, in many variables, it's all about the square footage of coverage that you use. So our modules are nice. They're two by two foot, so that's four square feet 
Our smaller cubes are one square feet per side, weigh about 37 pounds, I think was the way we figured out that they come to. So it's all about tuning and getting that pressure managed. That's the key. So you want to first pressure map your room in any theater, especially. I mean, we're running four 13 and a half inch subs here. It's more than enough, but it requires a lot of low frequency management. And that's what we've done here. So this first video, it's all about low frequency pressure management. You got to get the low frequency managed correctly in the room. And we're going to do a whole series of uh, videos on the response curves as we've walked through this process. But for purposes of this first video, we wanted to introduce you to the room, what we're doing in the room, and, you know, the various layouts with the speakers and the side channels and the subwoofers. And you can kind of get an overview of, of the treatment. So pressure map. We want to get all the pressures from all the modes. And in this room, it's 30 to 85 because we've got good dimensions. Most of you out there have smaller rooms, so your modes extend all the way up to 300. So we still apply the same approach. We still use the same rate and level of our technology, our carbon and the foam. And we're going to use a little bit different square footage coverages, obviously, uh, when you have more issues to deal with. So that's our first video in this series. Stay tuned. We're going to do a uh, five more on the room, and we're going to talk specifically about each area of the room in those videos. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.